this computer. So, hi everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. We're all hi. being recorded and Manda, I'm going to turn this over to you. So thank you so much. And we are muting except for Manda. Okay. My name is Manda Crystal. I work for Family and Children's Association. It's a nonprofit organization that has been here on Long Island for 135 years, servicing Long Islanders, everybody from birth to seniors, and we run the whole gamut of social services. The program that I run is on financial exploitation and abuse, and it's uh, uh, it, educational program, outreach and advocacy to seniors to help educate them against scams, against financial abuse and exploitation. And we're here to answer any questions that you may have regarding that. We do do in-person counseling when necessary. And I'll give you all the details at the end of this presentation. So Stacy contacted me and asked me to do this presentation specifically on scams that are very prevalent right now during this period of crisis. So I'm gonna to speak to you about three different scams that I want you to be aware of. And the first one is about the census scam. So the census is used to distribute more than $675 billion in federal money to the state. It's our civic duty to complete the census for many reasons. By completing the census, it gives an accurate description of the amount of people that are living in our state. So we are allocated our dollars according to that representation. And also our local government is represented based on those numbers. So unfortunately in the 2010 National Survey Census, New York lost two representatives because the numbers didn't show that the representation was warranted. So it's important to fill out the census. What I want you to know about the census is this. The US Census Bureau will not send unsolicited emails to you to request you to participate in the census. If you are, have any website that mentions is affiliated with the US Census Bureau, please verify that it is an accurate website. The census that's coming to you now will only be coming to you from a place called Jeffersonville, Indiana. So any census survey that comes to your house that says Jefferson, Indiana, Bernardsville, Indiana, any place but Jeffersonville, Indiana is not a legitimate census. So please, that's the number one thing. Remember, the correct census will be mailed from Jeffersonville, Indiana. There are three ways that you can respond to the census. By email, by phone, or online. If you don't answer the census, somebody will be coming through the neighborhood to help you survey and fill out the survey and respond to the census. What you need to know about the census is this. No census will ever ask for your immigration status, your social security number, your bank account number, or credit card information. They will never threaten jail, detainment, or deportment if you don't answer the census. So what do you need to know to avoid becoming a victim of a census scam? If somebody comes to your neighborhood to have you fill out the scam, make sure that you look at their photo badge ID. It should have an expiration date, it should have their photo, and it should have a watermark from the United States Department of Commerce. In addition, they should also have a copy of the letter that was sent to you. Number two, don't give any personal information. 
It will only ask demographic information of how many people are living in your home and demographic information. Do not give your mother's maiden name, your social security number, your banking information, or any other personal information. If for any reason you think that you have been a victim of a census scam, there is a place to report it. The number, the telephone number to report a telephone, a census scam is 800-923-8282. I'll repeat it again. It's 800-923-8282. So that is the first scam that I wanted to talk to you about. The next one I want to speak to you about is the COVID-19 coronavirus scams. Now, when we hear COVID-19 coronavirus, I know myself and everybody included, our skin gets tingly, we get a little nervous. It's very anxious times for us all, and especially for us as seniors, who are more susceptible and are in that target demographics of people who are um, more vulnerable. So we're all on edge, we've been quarantined, we've been in our homes, and cyber criminals know this. And in general, before the COVID-19 outbreak, scammers were always targeting seniors because we are more vulnerable, we're at home more often, but they are now using the coronavirus outbreak as a way to really um, go after seniors. They are fishing for information to steal valuable financial information from you, personal information from you, to introduce malware into your computers are sending malicious emails through seemingly trusted sources, such as the Center for Disease Control, the World Health Organization, or they are doctoring email messages to appear to be internal from workplaces. And this information is being sent to us by the cybersecurity firms that are monitoring hackers and suspicious behavior. So what do these hackers do and how do they fish for information? One, they send phony alerts that seem to be from the Center for Disease Control or the World Health Organization asking you to click on a link to get information, local information from your area regarding the coronavirus numbers or updates. Two, they may be sending fake information with embedded links or attachments telling you that they are offering prevention advice and asking you to click on to those links. Three, they may also be sending forms for you to fill out and give them sensitive information such as password names, usernames, and Medicare numbers. So remember, scammers are taking advantage of the fears that we have surrounding the virus. And they know that you want to do everything you can to be informed and to protect yourself. So what can we do to keep ourselves informed and protected and away from the scammers, prevent ourselves from being targeted? One. Watch out for these emails claiming to be from the CDC or the World Health Organization or any experts saying that they have information about the virus. For the most up-to-date information about the virus, go to the Center for Disease Control website or the World Health Organization website. I'm going to give you those links now. For the World Health Organization, it is www.who.int. For the CDC, Center for Disease Control, 
It is cdc.gov forward slash coronavirus forward slash 2019 dash N like in Nancy, C-O-V. Those are the legitimate websites for the CDC as well as the World Health Organization. So remember, don't click on any links from sources that you don't know because they can download viruses onto your computer. Verify the link in the information yourself. Once you've verified it independently, then it is okay to go ahead and click on the link. Two, ignore all online offers for vaccinations or home test kits. There are currently no pills, no potions, no lotions, no lozenges, or any other kind of prescription or over-the-counter drugs to treat or cure coronavirus. They're not in stores, they're not online. So save your money, protect your credit card. There is nothing available yet for consumers to buy in order to protect yourself from these viruses. Again, check email addresses. If you get something from the World Health Organization, it will come with a person's name with the at sign and who.int. If there is anything written after that int, it is not a valid email from the World Health Organization. And you might see this coming to you in other forms like from Microsoft, or Apple computer, it looks very legitimate because the website that it's coming from is very close. The link is very similar to the authentic organization. There's just one little thing that makes it different and makes it a scam. So again, for the WHO, it'll only be who.int with nothing written afterwards. When giving out personal information, always consider why somebody needs that information and if it is appropriate to do so. Remember, there is no reason why anybody needs your username, your password, your social security number, your Medicare number to access public information. That personal information should be really guarded with your life and you should never give it to somebody that you don't know, that you personally haven't contacted or somebody who has initiated the conversation with you. Before you do so, make sure you verify that they are truly who they say they are. Another thing the scammers are doing is they are rushing us and making us feel pressure to do things and they're using the coronavirus as a um, what, as a, an emergency as a way to get to us. So please remember, take time to think before you act. If you feel that you've given sensitive information out, don't panic. Anything that you've given out, such as a password name, a password or a username to cyber criminals, just go to the websites where you use that information and change your credentials. That is a way to protect yourself from having further uh, information being taken from you. We also see scams regarding Medicare and the coronavirus. So what can you do to protect yourself and keep yourself safe from these scams? Don't give out your Medicare number to anybody other than your doctor or your healthcare providers. Nobody else needs that Medicare number. Protect it like you would your credit card number. If somebody contacts you through a telephone call, an unsolicited email, a text, offering you a free brace or a neck brace, a knee brace, 
be very skeptical. These usually are scams. They usually uh, go ahead and charge Medicare thousands of dollars. They give you a substandard brace. And then if you ever need to get one, you are not allowed to get one because it shows that you've already put a claim through for it. So be careful of who you give your Medicare number two and what you are um, allowing to come into your home. Let's uh, review a little bit. Please make sure you don't click on sources that you don't know, which could put your computer at risk for malware. Make sure that you have anti-malware, anti-virus software on your computers and that it is up to date. Be cautious when you are purchasing medical supplies from unverified sources, especially through online ads, emails, or phone solicitations. And please ignore online offers for vaccinations or treatments or prevention products against COVID-19. Another way scammers are getting uh, money from us is by asking us to make a donation to charities or crowdfunding sites due to the corona emergency. Please make sure if you are going to donate money to charity that it is a legitimate website. Be wary of any charity asking for donations by cash, by gift card, or wire transfers. And in general, anybody that is asking you to pay for anything using a gift card, there are a lot of scams with utilities, with all kinds of um, personal injury, personal, somebody's in danger. Anybody that's asking you to pay for something with a gift card is a scammer. The only time you should be giving a gift card or using a gift card is when you want to gift somebody that gift card. Never make a purchase, never donate, never pay a bill using a gift card. It is 100% a scam. The next thing I want you to be aware of is um, investment opportunities. A lot of people now are looking for companies that are working on cures, treatments, vaccines for the coronavirus. And the SEC is warning us that there are products and services of publicly traded companies that are being touted as coming close to preventing or detecting a cure for COVID-19. And that the stock in these companies are going to rise dramatically. So get in now while you can. Please, if you are going to make an investment in some company that is touting coronavirus cures, make sure you do your due diligence and your research. Do not believe information somebody is giving to you over the phone, on an email. You do the research and if you feel that you understand and want to invest, then go ahead and do so. Again, as we said, protect your Medicare number. Be cautious of anybody coming door to door. Don't fall for scare tactics. Um, and remember, fraudsters are attempting to bill Medicare for sham tests and treatments related to the coronavirus. They are targeting us as seniors to e illegally obtain our money and our Medicare numbers. So please be aware and be safe. And last, the last scam that I want to talk to you about that is relevant regarding this emergency now is the government relief checks. As everybody knows, there is a stimulus package that's on the table and they're talking about $1,200 coming per adult who has filed their tax returns in 2018 and it will be coming to each and every adult in the household. What's happening now, and we are being uh, reported that there are scammers that are going to be sending out texts, emails, and phone calls relating to these checks that are being sent to you by the government. 
At this point, as you know, the details are still being worked out, but know that no one from the government will call you or email you or text you asking for your social security number, your bank account number, or credit card number in order to get these relief checks. You will never have to confirm your birth date. You will not have to make a phone call to get the check, nor will you have to sign up anywhere to get the check. There will be no fee for getting a relief check. So these are all ways that scammers are gonna be starting out in fast and furious to get you to re give them personal information or money. There is nobody that you can pay to expedite getting that relief check faster. So again, for the government relief check, remember, do not give any personal information in order to get the check. You do not have to confirm your birth date. You don't have to do any proactive um, activity such as signing up or making a call to get a check. And lastly, do not pay anybody to expedite the check for you. When the details are worked out, you will be notified by mail no later than 15 days after the payment was distributed. In that notification, it will indicate the amount that you are being sent, the method of delivery, and there will be a phone number to call at the IRS in case you don't get that payment. So again, I'm going to repeat that because it's really important to know. You will be notified that money has been sent to you 15 days after the payment was distributed. It'll tell you the amount, how it was sent, and the method of delivery. If you don't get that number, that check, you then can call the IRS phone number on that notification and let them know that the check did not arrive. So those are the scams that I wanted to tell you about regarding immediacy in terms of this virus and the scams that are coming to light because of this virus. Um, just a word in general on scams and I can do another a presentation for you on other scams that are targeting the senior community. The one thing I want you to know is there, excuse me, there is something called spoofing of phone numbers. And that means when you look on your caller ID, it might look like the Social Security Administration or the IRS is calling you, but in fact, it is a spoof number. When you pick up the phone, when somebody asks you and tells you that you're gonna be arrested or that there's a problem with your social security check, it is fake. Government agencies will never initiate a phone call to you. So please be aware of spoofing numbers. Never pay with anything with gift cards. Try not to act quickly and quietly anytime somebody is pressuring you to do something quickly. And be careful, safeguard your personal information. Do not give it to an unknown caller or an unknown link and be safe, be healthy, and thank you for being here. We're gonna unmute you now, so if there are any questions, I'd be happy to. I have a question. Sure. Uh, Thank my you, Amanda. That was great. Do one at a time. Okay. My understanding is that the IRS is also, if you file digitally last year or the year before, or actually this year or the year before, they will digitally put the money into your bank account. As I said, the details are being worked out now, so I can't confirm or deny that. It is possible, but I... They, they don't even, it's not 100% sure what, what they're doing yet. Not when I read. <laughs> That's good. Yes, Steve. Okay. Uh, well, you said uh, two things. One, uh, on the census, I had gotten a form in the mail. I filled it out online, and I've been getting a lot of 
email about filling out the census. I, when I first got it in the mail, I filled it out online. I got my confirmation code or whatever it would, whatever they sent, said, told me, gave me. And I've been getting other ones which I've been deleting. Right? That's, That's good. Number. That's good. Secondly, when you talked about these phone scams, uh, with IRS or Social Security, uh, I would say that at least everybody has some sort of answering machine on their phone. And if you get a call from a number that is not familiar, don't bother answering it. Let the machine pick up, right. play the message, and then you can decide whether you want to call back or not. That is excellent information. And as a matter of fact, something that's important to know, when you pick up the phone, it is registered by these scammers that somebody has picked up picked the phone. Up the phone. Right. And if right. you listen to the end and they tell you press one or press to in order to stop it, then they know that you've listened to the whole message. So there are piles that these scammers have and it goes into a live pile. And it's a number that's worth calling back because not only did they pick up, but they listened to the whole um, message. Right. It's very possible that when you don't pick up, although it won't stop the calls from happening right away, if after two or three times you don't know, pick up the phone machine, will answer and your number will go on to a dead pile. And that's not to say other scammers won't get your number and to be calling you, but it does tend to reduce the amount of phone calls that you do get. So the information that you said about not picking up the phone is the best information I could give. Right, and one other thing, uh, if you ever pick up a phone and you're talking, I was told never. Never, never say yes. Say the word yes. Right. That's Destroy. correct. They can pull that word out and paste it on to right. whatever they want to do. Yes. So, luckily, I mean, luckily, that scam has been going by the wayside. I don't know why. It is. It had been in use and was quite popular a while ago, a few years back, but we're seeing much, much less of it. But that is good information as well. Hard to do, but good information. Thank you. Just told I have a, another question. I got a census form. I filled it out and I sent it back by mail. I then got another one. I got another census census form. I'm totally ignoring the second one because I assume having answered the first one, I should not have received a second. Correct. Sorry? That's correct. You only need to fill out one. No, I know. I, yeah, right. Steve, I just want to stem off your... Um your question um, about the phone calls, just to let you know, and this is for everyone, um, except for Amanda, sorry. Um, just to let everyone know, unfortunately, I did not have the chance to set up call forwarding. I am working with uh, Karen Josephs to be able to, set, to get that set up. So um, if you leave me a voicemail, and I'm, I'm sorry, just real quick. Um, if you guys leave me a voicemail, I'm going to be calling you back from a blocked number. Um, if you prefer not to receive a call from a blocked number from me, and I, I will leave you a voicemail, um, just email me. But I'm, I'm not giving my cell phone number out to everyone. And if I can get the recording set up, I will. Well, I but yeah, I totally understand you don't want to pick up because you yeah. see blocked number and you know. I'm listening to everything. Scam, so. Yeah. Want to throw that out there? Um, anybody else have any questions for um, for Amanda? Uh, I have another one other quick question. Yeah. Uh, do you know anything about unemployment insurance? Excuse me. Do you know anything regarding unemployment insurance? No. <laughs> uh, okay. okay, I have. A, do you know anything about ID theft from uh, department yeah. stores? Yes. Yes. Okay. I had two, two exact same stores, Macy's, Saks, and Bloomingdale's, a number of years ago, where they didn't. I had the credit card in my house, sitting in my pocket, and they stole my identity. I'm guessing it's through the database that somebody working with their database found my number, and they decided to purchase eight thousand dollars worth of things. And it was a big pain, but how do you protect about, against something like that? I reported it to the stores. I reported it to the police. I never had to pay. Then the second 
time it happened, the same thing the following year. Same way, same thing. How do you prevent that from happening? Because it's a royal pain to have to do all the paperwork. Yes, it is. So there are two things. So uh, everybody knows that there are three credit reporting agencies, Equifax, yeah. Experian, and TransUnion. What you're allowed to do is free of charge. You can put something called a fraud alert or a freeze on your credit report. And what that does is if anybody is trying to use your credit that is not you, uh, you will be notified. A fraud alert is available. I believe they've extended it now. It used to be for six months. I believe it might now be for one year. Mm -hmm. And, and then it, you have to renew it. But a freeze is really something that locks your whole uh, identity up and that it, you get a password to unfreeze your accounts. But if you are not going to be making any large purchases like a mortgage, a car loan, um, anything that you need your identity, you know, your credit to be looked into, then if you freeze that report, then mm -hmm. nobody, nobody, including you, can really do anything uh, with it uh, unless you unfreeze it. And it doesn't happen uh, instantaneously. So if you went to a shopping center and you wanted to open up a new credit card to get that 20% off, if you open the account now, you would not be able to do a freeze. But those are the ways that you can protect your credit by putting it. Is that anything like LifeLock, which I already have? No, LifeLock is a monitoring service. Uh, you know, it, it, LifeLock is a four fee light um, monitoring service. They also, I think, have Norton now. They're also with Norton antivirus. Yeah. Did you have yes, another one? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, when, what Eleanor had said before, uh, asked me, and what you had mentioned with the uh, three monitoring, you know, TransUnion and the other two, right. I had gotten a letter from Capital Bank, I think it was, uh, mentioning that. And they, I called the bank to make, you know, to firm, you know, not the number that on the letter that was sent, but from my back of my credit card. Right. Uh, no, I was getting the right number. And the lady that I spoke to said that you can every three months, excuse me, every four months, a free. Uh, request your uh, you know, get a, a credit, credit free. How to get my picture? On, uh, and get a credit report you every do? four months, free of charge. So this right. way, every four months, you will be getting update and at no charge. So it's uh, this way. You have three of them, uh, three credit unions, uh, yeah, credit, whatever they are. Uh, so you always go forever and never have to pay for a credit report. You do it every four months and a credit freeze. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do, if you give a credit freeze on on one on one of them, it goes to all three. Right. So that's what, what Steve said is correct. You are allowed to report a year right. for each of these credit agencies. And what I always do I know it's true, but it's is every four months. Go right. to a different right. credit agency. This way you we can see your report for the year. You get three reports from each, one report from each of the agencies three times during the year. So that's a very good advice. Yep. Okay. Anybody, have any, anybody else have any questions? Yes, I have a question. This is Nola. Is, it, is Credit Karma reliable? I don't I don't have information one way or another on that I can look into it for you and get back to Stacy okay anybody else it's talking about credit cards now so I don't need to do it thank you if there's no further questions, then I'm going to stop the recording. And thank you, Amanda. I appreciated the session very